Well, folks, some uh, encouraging things happening here, and that is that uh, some local media are starting to report on the Oroville Dam spillway because of concerns of the people that live there, the locals. And uh, I think it's encouraging that uh, DWR is taking responsibility and accountability right now as far as, you know, people are putting their necks on the line saying that there aren't any issues right now. So um, it's not being buried. It's being reported. And that is a good thing. That's a positive thing. But let's go into this story real quick. Once again... I'm not saying that we don't have an issue here, folks. What I'm saying is that at least they're reporting it at a local level. California Department of Water Resources released a Lake Oroville community update on Monday afternoon amid rumors of ongoing safety concerns regarding the Oroville Dam main spillway. These rumors have been circulated mostly on Facebook, according to DWR Public Information Officer Elizabeth Whitmore. At this time, the community update should answer all questions regarding any safety issues with the main spillway as well as concerns growing over the upcoming rainstorm, Whitmore said. And uh, Whitmore talks about the oncoming storm, dumping at least uh, an inch and a half of rain. Talks about the uh, outflows of the Feather River are 9,500 cubic feet per second. Uh, it says forecasts and weather can change rapidly and DWR will notify the public and media if the main spillway needs to be used to manage reservoir levels. Goes on to say when will water be released? Aaron Mellon, DWR Assistant Director for Public Affairs said water will be released if the lake gets up to 899 feet at least. And I'll leave the uh, link to this article in the description. So they're saying that uh, they're not going to release water until 899 feet. So where are we right now? As she stated, we're at 889.28. So we are approaching that number and we've got precipitation, I believe, currently in Lake Oroville area. This is a uh, still image of a supposed live cam shot of the spillway. As you can see, if it's not a live image and it's being looped, well, they looped a, a, a loop from a time where it did rain because as you can see, it looks like the complete spillway is wet. Same thing with this shot, it looks like the roadway is wet on top of the spillway so again folks I personally have not validated that they were looping and shut down the live feeds but if they are looping and uh, shut down the live feed they have replaced it with a time where it was raining and this is a uh, capture of uh, live feed capture of Lake Oroville. So, what is the forecast, Lake Oroville? Tomorrow, rain, Thursday, rain, Friday looks like uh, day off, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday looks like rain. So, it's going to be rain one, two, three, four, five, six of the next seven days. So folks, yeah, I mean, this is a, it, it appears that the spillway is going to be tested um, and we'll just have to see what happens. I mean, I, we're doing these reports, we're trying to be fair, uh, we're not trying to scare anybody and say that the sky is falling. But you know, once again, if I was living there, I'd want to know this information and I'd want as much information as possible because, you know, it's scary to have a lot of water dumped on a couple hundred thousand people. And everybody's trying to uh, evacuate at the same time. And if you remember 2017, it was a it was a mess trying to get out of there. There's an interesting uh 
article that I found from 2018, late 2018, December 17th. What caused nearly 20,000 quakes at Oroville Dam? Scientists weigh in on the mystery. And it goes down here saying that they believe we've never seen anything like this, said the report's lead author, USGS seismologist Robert Scalmau. It's the first case of a spillway causing an earthquake that we're aware of. So they're, they're actually saying that the spillway is causing earthquakes. You go down here, it says the location and seismic fingerprints of the 0.8 and 1.0 magnitude events were traced and the research team sorted through old earthquake records learning that similar movement was frequent in the Oroville area at Butte County. Since, listen to this, since 1993, as far back as the records went, a total of 19,291 tiny seismic events had taken place, the team found. While plentiful, none of the quakes exceeded a 1.0 magnitude, making the making them too small to detect without measurement tools. The likely cause of the activity they concluded was water pushing through the crevices in the dam spillway and putting pressure on the underlying rock. The leaking water filled pores in the ground and made them expand before receding back into position causing the earth to move. Now, I'm also under the uh, impression, or not under the impression, I've read that uh, after the melee and the uh, fault in 2017, that there was uh, the failure, that gold was found. So there was a little bit of a gold rush in the area. I'm just wondering, you know, do they use explosives? And did they use, I'm asking the question, did they use explosives at any time or do they still to mine for gold? That's just a thought. But how stable is it in that whole area when you're dealing with even small quakes at, at, at 1.0, 20,000 of them since the 1990s. That's a lot. That's a lot of activity going on in that area. And, you know, when you start dealing with, you know, small quakes and that much water, well, you know, you do the math. And then the other thing I want to mention is that uh, Orville Dam Watch Group apparently was uh, served with an injunction and can no longer report on the, uh, on the dam. So, you know, the funny thing about it was yesterday I went to a video uh, and they were reporting on it. They actually did a report stating that they were served an injunction. They could not re report on the dam any longer and uh, explaining that. And then I went back about an hour later and they pulled that video out. So the last video I see here is from a day ago, Orville Dam, uh, May 13th update. So, and the... Uh, statement that they made about getting an injunction on them from DWR. By the way, DWR stands for Department of Water Resources, if you didn't know. Um, so that, that they had to pull a video. I'm trying to get these guys to come on to our show, Victorious Libertas, Ridrad, and uh, do an interview with us, because I think it would be very interesting. I don't know if they're allowed to speak on other venues or if they just can't do it on their own uh, channel anyway folks i have to say that my spidey senses tell me that we are close to a major event or events plural if not the dam perhaps something else when you add it all together it's not too outlandish to be on alert for example Black military helicopters in formation donning the skies. Armored personal carriers spotted being transported by rail in Northern California. Unannounced military drills throughout the country scaring the crap out of people. Stealth fighters can be heard but not seen throughout the day all across the country. 
The continued spraying of aerosols in the atmosphere causing weather and radar anomalies. Unexplained electromagnetic spikes being picked up by NEXRAD throughout the country. Escalating tensions with North Korea. Escalating tensions in the Middle East. A trade war with China. China, Russia, and India all abandoning the U.S. dollar. Folks, our political stage is just that. It's like a circus has come to town. People are more divided than I have ever seen in my lifetime. Here in the United States, there's a full onslaught on the Constitution. Our rights to free speech, our rights to bear arms, our right to due process, including representation, a fair trial, and the notion of innocent until proven guilty. It was an interesting story I read on CNN yesterday that tried to imply that white nationalism was synonymous with domestic terrorism. Well, folks, given the fact that Trump's base is largely made up of white nationalists, what is CNN saying about Trump supporters? The writing is on the wall as to what direction they are trying to go. By the way, domestic terrorists do not have constitutional rights. Let me read Section 802 of the U.S. A Patriot Act. Expanded definition of terrorism to cover domestic as opposed to international terrorism. A person engages in domestic terrorism if they do an act dangerous to human life. That is a violation of the criminal laws of a state or the United States. If the act appears to be intended to, now listen to this, intimidate or coerce a civilian population influence the policy of a government by intimidation or coercion. Interesting that we have heard this relatively new term in social media lately, influencer. It sounds flattering to be considered a social media influencer. However, given the verbiage in the Patriot Act, influence, intimidate, coerce, it sounds chillingly familiar to getting flagged by YouTube for harassment and bullying. And if you are a social media influencer, are you not being accused of attempting to coerce a population in their eyes? And folks, that goes for Facebook and Twitter and all social media platforms. I bring this stuff up not as doom and gloom or fear porn. I do it for awareness. We must be aware of the activities that are going on and how they can affect us and our families. Let me conclude with this, Luke 21, 34 through 36. Be on guard so that your hearts will not be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life. And that day will not come on you suddenly like a trap, for it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of the earth. But keep on alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Well, folks, God bless you all. Take care. And we'll talk to you soon.